All right. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Todd Jerome Jenkins, the safety aficionado. This weekend, I'm here with my guest, and uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Nick Peasley. I'm a regional safety manager for uh, Sunbelt Rentals right now. I grew up in a small town in southeastern Washington State called Walla Walla, Washington. Went to school over in uh, the middle of Washington State at Central Washington University. Go Cats! And uh, we live in Louisville, Kentucky right now. So we've been in the Louisville area for about a little over a year. Uh, we love it. And uh, topography is a heck of a lot different than Washington State, but uh, we're enjoying ourselves. So appreciate you having me on, Todd. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, I grew up in Ohio, so uh, I've been to Cincinnati plenty of times, so I'm kind of familiar. It's a little bit south, but <laughs> a little familiar with that area. Uh, so uh, how'd you get into safety? How, and you said you work for some about Reynolds. So how'd you get into the, the – first, how'd you get into safety? Yeah, yeah, no, not a problem. I uh, I get asked this question quite quite frequently, and I Absolutely. wish I had some grand some grand answer. Um, but how I got into safety was I had uh, a couple buddies actually in college that were a couple years ahead of me, and I was looking. It was about that time in in my life or in my college in college where I needed to choose a career or choose a, a at least a program to get into. <laughs> right. Um, and I said they kept on nagging me about, hey, the safety gig. It's a it's a pretty good gig. Um, for people who are personable, people who are hard workers, um, and obviously from a revenue or, or a salary standpoint, it treats you pretty well too. So I said, hey, you know what? I don't really know what I want to do. I'll get into it. Um, I met with the program director, Safi, one of the best guys I've, I've met throughout this profession, still keep in contact with him today. Absolutely. Um, and it just kind of fit me, man. It, it, was a, it was a good fit. I did an internship down in the San Diego area. Uh, with a structural concrete company and it was just I, I'm a personable guy I like to talk a lot I care about people um, I, I really 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 do care about people going home at the end of the day safe to their families and I think it's a growing industry it's a growing profession and the sky's the limit um, as far as the professional growth and, and what we can do within the profession absolutely I couldn't agree with you more um, you know I got into safety from the field started out as a carpenter and kind of it fell into it and I think a lot of people have that uh you know, kind of fell into the safety program, but I'm, I'm meeting a lot more folks that are entering the profession straight, you know, out of college and there's the programs. And I, I personally think that's pretty awesome. Um, it gives, uh, you know, gives people a different perspective. Uh, and, and it definitely, uh, you, you know, you got to get out there, like you said, you got to get out there and kind of press the flesh and uh, shake hands and all that good jazz. So that, that's pretty awesome. It's definitely a career for someone who's uh, has an outgoing uh, personality. <laughs> very well, very think... similar to sales, right? I think me and you were talking about it a little earlier when I first started here at Sunbelt is, uh, yeah, you kind of see that development of the profession, right? A lot or probably five, 10 years ago, a lot of people who were trade workers just hopped into the safety professional role because they wanted to get it out of that manual labor aspect, maybe, or go a different route. And now you see, yeah, a lot of kids coming out um, with certifications going right into the role, which is cool. It's awesome to see. Um, and I think, I mean, we have a couple guys here at Sunbelt who have done that and I've seen yeah. a couple more around the profession and from other companies I work for. So it is, it's really cool. Um, and it's only getting more and more prominent. So is there anything that you felt was uh, a little bit more challenging than you expected? Uh, you know, when you, when you first got into safety? safety? Definitely. There's a lot. I have a, uh, I have a laundry list for you, but sure. I'll keep it to a couple. So I would say probably one of the most, one of the most difficult things for me to really get a grasp on, especially being, I'm not a 20 year old, but I, I'm somewhat of a young professional was the lines of communication and how to go about that. So from an executive level to a senior level down to me, the, the, the low guy on the totem pole, how do we keep that community or the communication lines open and free flowing? And how do we all get what we want? when we're trying to push something out to the company. So I think for me, it's pretty it's pretty easier when I first started. It was pretty easy to look at and go, well, hey, if we have this cool thing or this cool policy or this cool procedure or a cool incentive, what, let's just push it out. It'll be great. We'll, we'll, uh, we don't have to have a whole lot of communication behind it. Everybody will take it right. um, and nobody will want to put a spin on it, right? And what I've learned uh, from my last couple of years especially is that there's a lot of people who want to touch um, on any of those things within a company, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Right. Um, but it, it usually takes a little bit more um, than what you think to get something out from a communication standpoint. And uh, I wish we could just throw stuff out there. It would be a heck of a lot easier. But uh, that's probably been my, my biggest obstacle, but also probably 
my biggest accomplishment is just kind of dealing on a day-to-day basis. Well, hey, we've got this person up here who wants this pushed out. Yeah. How do I make sure that for all of us, um, it, it's as easy as possible or as smooth as possible moving forward out into the field um, or out, out in front of those frontline workers? Yeah, I think uh, getting the message out there and getting people to embrace it, uh, you would think that, you know, that I, I would agree with that. You know, I, w- I always thought, um, even coming from the trades, you know, folks would be like, hey, do this safely, don't, you know, don't, you know, wear your safety glass, do these things, uh, tie off, here's this fall protection. You know, whenever I learned something new, I was like, well, that just, that makes sense. I'm glad I know that, right? Uh, you know, whatever that is, you know, keep your tool on your guard and whatnot. I always thought that the message would just resonate with everyone, but you're right. There's a lot of people that uh, either doesn't, it doesn't resonate with them. Uh, for whatever their you know personal reasons are, or other people want to kind of change the message and kind of piggyback <laughs> onto what safety's uh, doing. Uh, I've had that challenge myself. Um, so, from a safety standpoint, uh, is there anything that's kind of changed over the last two years since you've been in the, the profession? Uh yeah, I think, like I said, I haven't been in the profession for a terribly long time. But sure. I think within the last five years that I've been in the profession, when I first started out, I started out in the construction industry. And it was probably about 60, 40, 60 percent field work, 40 percent um, office work. Yeah. And I think from a policy procedure, just administrative EHS professional standpoint, I think it's probably moved to where I am now to about – a 60, 40, about 360 on that. So about 60% in the office, 40% out in the field, which it, it is what it is. That's just how things go. Um, yeah. We have a big territory within the company that I work for to, to try and manage. But um, I think that's probably been the biggest shift as far as when I first started, it was really we're trying to push being out in the field, uh, making sure that I'm touching each and every individual or every employee on that site each and every day just to see, hey, establish those relationships so when i have to have that hard conversation um, or have a professional conversation with that employee it's a little bit easier um, when they know who you are and what you're about and yeah. now it's just kind of moved to there's just a lot of stuff going on from an administrative standpoint and there's a lot of things for one individual to handle like many companies out there i'm not the only one who's doing that right. uh, but i think it's probably the roles reverse it's been for about 60 40 um, in the office rather than out in the field now which is like i said uh, I think it just happened. It's part of the profession, but um, that's the biggest change. That's good. No, yeah, I would. Uh, I would have to agree with that. I've, uh, you know, sometimes I think about that. Is that a career growth or is that a trend in the industry? Right. Um, I, I would agree that when I first started, and I was uh, my first position, I, I moved from a superintendent into a safety director. Uh, so, um, you know, as a superintendent, you can't manage from behind the desk. If you don't get out there and watch what the project's happening. Uh, you just don't know what's going on, right? So um, I brought that philosophy with me, and I tried to be in boots on the ground as much as possible. But uh, you know, in my in my role, I have transitioned to where I'm, you know, ninety percent I'm behind a computer now. Uh, very rarely do I get in the field anymore. And when I do, it's usually in, in a group, <laughs> you know, a group setting, right? Like I'm getting in front of yeah. a group of people, not just going and meeting that guy who's actually, uh, you know, the the guy who I'm actually trying to protect. That guy, right? <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's definitely well, a... I was going to... And sorry to cut you off. Yeah, no, yeah. But one more thing I wanted to say on that is I think you're absolutely right. It's probably a little bit about the growth and as me as a professional as far as instead of trying to touch every person or to show every individual or every employee how to do something, you kind of take a step back the, the more years you get under your belt as a safety professional and you try and make them realize what that is and they right. do that on their own, right? So instead of being out there and interacting with them face-to-face every day, maybe you say, hey, you have that one conversation, but it's a more impactful conversation. So the next time that they run into that exposure hazard, whatever that might be, um, they, they have the... Uh, professional obligation as well as responsibility say hey you know what i had this conversation the other day with a safety manager this right. really 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 cool safety manager <laughs> and uh i know how to i know how to handle this and i don't need him or her to be there every time that i encounter this right because they taught me rather than just show me awesome no oh, yeah that's great um so along with that uh, you know kind of thinking and i know you said you've been in the career a short time just a few years but is there something that you wish everybody would just stop doing or alternatively start doing when it comes to safety so this is going to sound really cliche but i really wish everybody would just wear their dang ppe (laughs) if we could get everybody to just wear their dang ppe um maybe the severity of the incident the severities would change we couldn't stop an incident from happening sometimes but the severity of those incidents um would definitely be lessened and it seems like whenever i walk around you're talking to people it's like hey 
why, why don't you wear that? Or why don't you do this? It's always, well, it's kind of like that cool factor, right? You right. don't want to be the guy to have, have on all of this PPE walking around every day. Cause that would just be, that would make way too much sense. That's right. So I think I, I wish from, from the employees that I deal with or the, the people in the profession that I deal with, I'd say, yeah, just wear your dang PPE people. Cause it's, Man. it's so easy to do. Yeah. It seems like such a, again, such an easy thing that you think everybody would uh, get into, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I remember when they uh, started handing out hard hats. I kind of dated myself there, but uh, and saying, <laughs> "Hey, everybody needs to wear these, right?" And we yeah. we threw them in our bucket, uh, or we hung it on the baker uh, when we were hanging drywall. We were like, "What's? I'm not gonna hurt my head. I'm doing this, you know." And and now you can't walk on a, a job site without putting on a hard hat. And, and I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't now. Some of it has to do with just age and experience like you were talking about uh yeah but even gloves and glasses you know i remember when they handed that stuff out and you're like get out of here you know yeah uh, especially yeah. some of the older guys would push back and kind of laugh um but it, it it does save you right it protects your eyes it protects your uh your hearing it protects your head your 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 hands and those are all important so if we could just get people to do the very minimum <laughs> that would be great <laughs> yeah as, uh, along with i wish the integration of technology um, people would be a little bit more accepting um, to that as well, right? Because we have all this great technology, and you know that. Oh, you're personal. preaching to the choir right there, man. I'm all <laughs> about integrating were... technology into our uh, into safety in our process. I mean, I agree. We just don't leverage uh, we don't leverage it the way we should. We don't leverage it in training. We don't leverage it in the field. I mean, there's everybody has a phone. Everybody has an iPhone, you know, or some kind of phone that connects to the internet. And there's so many apps out there that we could be using, and we just don't. Um, and that's that's industry wide. That's not a specific company. It's just something I've seen through the entire industry. I, I mean, I've even uh, folks can go back and look. I've I've given talks all the way back in like you know 2014 on integrating uh, technology into the construction industry. Um, at the uh, uh, it doesn't matter where, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so what's one question I should have asked you about safety regarding safety? What's something that you kind of top of mind? Something you. So I would say uh, maybe a good question that, that you could have asked or that maybe going forward that you could ask is where do you see where do you see the profession going or what do you see happening within the next five years, you know, three, five years, 10 years down the road? Where do you see maybe not only you as a professional, um, but the industry as a whole? Where, where do you kind of see that progressing from an EH&S standpoint? What's kind of the next? Because you know as well as I do what what's the next buzzword over the next three years or what's the next policy and procedure to implement at a company over the next three to five years? And, and do we really get to that? Do do all the companies, do we have a unanimous buy-in to the human performance aspect across the industry or are we still focusing or are most of the companies really still focusing on that compliance aspect, which I think we could probably agree they're, they're pretty equally important. Absolutely. Um, but some of the, some companies just haven't yet developed um, the brain, what an employee is thinking or how that happened rather than right. just why it happened. Yeah. The, that safety one and safety two, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right? Exactly. Like, are we, are we working towards compliance and we're doing proactive where, you know, something bad happens and we're going to, we're going to do our best to fix it. Or are we being mm -hmm. proactive and we're we're working uh, upstream so that when an issue happens downstream, uh, it's not an issue. It doesn't really you know interrupt the yeah. process, right? Yeah, there's yep. uh, that's that's pretty good. Kind of what what's your view on the the new view of safety, right? And uh, yeah. yeah, that's a good question. Good good question. So um, so how can my listeners uh, connect with you online? Yeah, so you guys can get a hold of me. I do have a LinkedIn account, Nick Peasley. Just type that right into the search bar there. I'm um, not really on too many other social media or aspects of social media. Um, Nick Peasley on LinkedIn would probably be the easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, shoot me a connection request and reach out if you have any questions. I'd love to chat. Um, I'm always open to answering or even asking any of those questions to any other EH&S professionals. I love hearing what other people are doing, what you guys and gals are getting into. Uh, just, just some cool things going across the board. I think there's a, it's a pretty, um, pretty unbelievable time in the EHS profession right now that we're going through as far as just development. Um, and I, I would love to hear about it because uh, sometimes I think you and me, I think we would agree that we can kind of get locked into our own little world. Oh, I'm yeah. sure other people kind of get locked into their own little world on a day-to-day -day basis because it is a busy, it's a busy job. Um, but I would love to reach or I'd love to connect with anybody and have a conversation with anybody. Yeah, kind of piggyback. I, I kind of feel like we get locked into our our industries as well, right? So, like you know, yeah. you, came, you came from construction, so there's some things that we do in construction. I came from construction. They're a little different in you know, say manufacturing or oil and gas or working in petro, you know, petrochemical or anything. Um, and, and you see that 
even like aviation safety with their system safety and, and other things that would probably be a benefit if we could look at uh, and learn to kind of cross-reference. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool. cool. Well, hey, I, I, really I really want to thank you for your time, time Nick. I really, really appreciate it. Um, uh, you know, you know I, I'll put down that uh, your LinkedIn contact information on the description so anyone who wants to contact you or connect with you. I definitely do. I kind of feel like, uh, you know, you're one of the upper covers. Like you said, you're doing it in a, in a uh, field, but uh, as I'm moving, I'm moving out, you're moving in, and I, I really feel like uh, we're, we're going to be in good hands, man. So, hey, uh, everyone, thanks for listening. I post a weekly safety topic every Monday morning. Uh, you can listen to the podcast. Uh, you can download a free PDF version of the weekly safety topic, or you can read the topic on my blog. Um, subscribe to the podcast to get notifications. And if you get a chance, visit my website, ToddJeromeJenkins.com. And remember, people make mistakes. Blaming people doesn't help anyone. Learning from our mistakes is crucial. Decisions are made in the moment. How we respond matters. So be human. Be kind. We're all doing the best we can with what we have.